Thank you again for visiting with us this morning. This is May the 3rd. This is our seventh week of bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ in this method. We thank you. Now, last week I got pretty excited. I got, and, and I do. I get excited when I, when I think about how great and wonderful God is. And I do get excited. And because, see, I'm, I'm, have, I'm like the, the lame man we talked about last week. I have an expectation that God is nowhere through with me. You know, I am closing in fast on my, my decade, num decade number six, on my 60th year. Um, I, have no, I have no doubt in my mind that the greatest things that God is going to use me for are still, still ahead of me. And I'm just patiently and faithfully enduring until those things begin to happen. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and let's ask God to show up again today and reveal to us His wisdom, His greatness, and what He has for us in His Word today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank You so much. We love You. We thank You. And I just pray today that there is a, just a heart full of gratefulness. Father, thank You. Lord, I know all around us there's struggles, Father. Lord, I know that, that, that people are struggling right now, Father. I'm, I'm not making light of that whatsoever. But Lord, I also know that as I read the Scriptures and spend time studying, that I saw in the Scriptures and I see in the Scriptures that when people struggle, the, the prophet King David, uh, your son Jesus, the Apostle Paul, Daniel, when, when I saw, when I see through the Scriptures that, that people struggled, that what relented and the struggle ceased was when they continued to proclaim victory through your Word and continued to praise you and continued, Father, to give you the honor and the glory for your greatness and your goodness even during the time of struggle. So this day, Father, I ask your Holy Spirit to go to all the people, Father, Place in them a heart of hope. Touch their spirit, Father, with faith and let them know this too shall pass. We will make it to the other side. And Father, when we do, we will have learned some things, Father, in the name of Jesus that will make us better and stronger and more prepared for the future that waits for us, that has been prepared by you for us. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. want to th say thank you to, to Ethan and his production company as we're just continuing together here. And uh, we've retrofitted the sanctuary into a, a studio and, and we're going to continue with the ninth hour, the ninth hour part two today. Now I do, I get excited. I, I get excited when I read about the great things that, that uh, God has done in the scriptures and, and left us his testimony, left us his will. You know, this, this Bible is the will of the Father. This, this Bible, this is the will. This is his covenant with us. This is his will. Now, if you've ever had somebody pass away and they left you a will, you went to the lawyer's office probably and you sat and read the will. Now, like any other thing, there can be family there and family can get involved in that and there can be some disagreements, but you have the lawyer and it doesn't matter that there be disagreements. That can be challenged. It can be challenged, but ultimately the will of the person who was deceased, the will of the person who was deceased stands, right? This is the will. The Word of God will stand forever. It has been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is, this is the, the will and the testimony, the covenant of God for His children. And it has been bought and paid for by the blood of His dear Son, Jesus Christ. So this will stand. This belongs to the believer. This belongs to the believer. And people can try to talk you out of it. People can try to shame you out of it. People can try to say that you're crazy for believing it. Well, that, that's okay. Um, 
I, I believe that people are a little bit off that don't believe it. Uh, but we don't judge them. We just love them. And so last week we talked about Peter and John, the two disciples of Jesus, that were doing just what Jesus told them to do. And it was so, so interesting. What I got so excited about was I thought that's so simple. Peter and John were just simply obeying what Jesus told them to do. Jesus told us to love one another. He didn't tell us to get in the flesh and, and you know, shoot our opinion out of, the, uh, uh, of this weapon up here. He didn't tell us to do that. He said, get your flesh under control. He said to, to fast and pray and get your flesh under control and get your mind. He said he didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God. And, and then he went on to say that, that the believer should work and study to show themselves approved and to literally have the mind of Christ. Well, that's all in Scripture. And that's if, if God said we can have it, then his son Jesus died and it legally belongs to us. So, so we talked last week about Peter and John being in unity. And we talked about the, the, uh, the poor man, the crippled man who had been crippled from the from time he was born. He came out of his mother's womb crippled. And in those days, under the religious structure, the do's and don'ts of religion and the, uh, the performance method of religion, this man was not allowed to go into the temple because he was imperfect. And I, I just, that, that, that is so, that's so foreign to some of us. And, and I, I said a few things last week and, and I said, we don't want perfect people here. You know why? Because there's no such thing as a perfect person. Only Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only perfect man. God in the form of Jesus came on this earth. He's the only perfect one. So no, we don't want, we don't want perfect people in this church because it would be a um, uh, impersonation. And so we want, we want people that are not perfect. And we want people that are willing to say we're not perfect, that we're going to make mistakes. So here is this guy. He had his, his, his enablers and I know I got some uh, uh, information and some requests from some people who said that whenever I talked about that, and I said that there are things that in, that that um, people are enabling them in that is crippling them. They didn't want they didn't want really going to go there, but they said when they heard that that they they realized that yes there was like a light came on and um, it was revealed to them that they did have some things in their life. Uh, some of it is something as simple as fear of failure. Fear of failure was paralyzing them or crippling them, keeping them from moving forward in what they knew that God had called them to do. Well, that's good. That means that the word of God went forward and um, we got their attention and they heard the word of God and they realized they've got to... Um, they got to do some things about that. They got to get with the Lord and get in unity with the Father. So here, Peter and John, they go up, um, and 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 you can go back and listen to the message from last week. Here, Peter and John going up to the temple. Here's this guy who's been carried up there every day. He has his enablers. He's not allowed to go into the temple, uh, and 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 people going to the temple, church people are walking by him every day. And and I when I closed last week, I said, God's plan for you is not to waste away begging and pleading for humanity to have mercy on you. That's not God's plan. It's a great thing. It is a great thing whenever humanity, people, understand that as a result of being born again, having the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, that we are supposed to show mercy. That's a great thing, but that's people showing us mercy will never equal will never equal the mercies of God that have already been bestowed upon any believer who will just reach out and receive it. A sinner can receive it as well if they'll just reach out. As a matter of fact, one of the one of the greatest demonstrations of mercy of God is whenever you've got a sinner who has just totally rejected the things of Christ, totally and living a, a, a flesh-filled life. And, and they come to that place like the prodigal son. They come to that place and they realize that um, this is not the life I want anymore. Uh, the sin was enjoyable for a while, but 
um, I, I've, I've heard about Jesus, but I really want to know Jesus. And they ask Jesus to forgive them, and there he does. He, he grants his mercy. He grants his mercy because he does not give them what they deserve, so he grants mercy. And grace, the unmerited favor, translates them, transfers them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light of his dear son. And now they're citizens of another kingdom, the kingdom of light. And this uh, church and other churches and many churches and, and Christians then will help you learn to live that kind of life if you'll give us just a little bit of your attention like what happened with this man. So let's get back to this uh, uh, this message, this this ninth hour. And just to review, remember last week we talked about the ninth hour and there were some great things in the Bible that happened at the ninth hour, about three o'clock in the afternoon. Jesus was crucified and at the ninth hour uh, of the day that he was crucified, there was darkness over the land. Started about the 12th, started about noon or the sixth hour, the darkness started. And then at the ninth hour, when Jesus said, my father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, and at that point, the darkness was dispersed. Why? Because the Lamb of God had been slain. He gave up his spirit. And now the fulfillment, the righteous requirements of the law have been fulfilled. And Jesus puts them into God's hands. And, <laughs> praise God, I just get so excited over that. Then God in heaven... You know, in the book of Malachi, where it talks about the windows of heaven be opened up and, and there'll be such blessing pour out on you that you'll, you'll not have room to receive the blessing. What a blessing. What a, what a blessing. Jesus took the, took the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment that he fulfilled on the cross at Calvary, an innocent man sacrificed for the sins of the world, and he put it into God's hands. You know why? Because God knows what to do with it. You... You put something into God's hands and he knows what to do with it. You put yourself into God's hands. He knows what to do with it. And then we talked about at the ninth hour, Peter and John were going up to the temple. And also the Roman centurion, um, the, the, the Roman centurion, Cornelius, uh, he was praying. He was a Roman coming out of the pagan culture. He was a Roman. He was, he was praying to God. And he saw a vision of an angel, and the vision told him to send for, for Simon Peter. So he sent for Simon Peter, and then Peter came and ministered the gospel of Jesus Christ. At the same time, uh, Peter had also had a vision, and that's where uh, the angel of the Lord in the vision that Peter had told him, said, what I have clean do not ever call common. <laughs> what, what I have clean do, what I have cleaned, what I have cleaned do not call common. Well, you're an uncommon person if you've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, right? So see, Peter's working in unity with the Holy Spirit. The Roman centurion then get together and the whole household of the Roman centurion is saved. So if you're believing for your household to be saved, then just tap into this power that happened at the ninth hour, which is the power of Jesus Christ pull, fulfilling the law, putting into God's hand and releasing it into the heart of the believer. So, and I, and I finished up last week, said God's plan for you, God's plan for every, God's plan for every human, whether you ever, whether you ever believe him or not, whether you accept him or not, God's plan is not for you to waste away begging and pleading for humanity to have mercy on you. What is God's plan? Jesus said it, I have come, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said the enemy came to kill. Well, first of all, he said came to steal. Let's make sure we get that in order. I'm doing a lot of this from memory. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can steal the word of God from you, he can kill your faith, and then he can destroy your life. Jesus said, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He says, I'm a good shepherd. So God's plan for you is to have an abundant life of grace, mercy, love, victory, overcoming. These are just to name a few. These are the, these are the things that God promised us. God promised these things to us. There's so many promises in this Bible. And if you'll get into this Bible and you'll connect, this is how we, this is how we connect. 
Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You need to read this Bible and read it and speak it to yourself. Father God has promised us things. God the Son delivered us access to those things. And God the Holy Spirit counsels and teaches us how to live within those things. Amen? Praise God. Now here's one thing God will not do. And it's what we're going to talk about today in the text of our message today. God will not enable you in the things Jesus died to overcome. God will not enable you in the things Jesus died to overcome. Now, what does that mean? That means that God will not enable you in the things that Jesus died to overcome. It's that simple. Jesus died to overcome disease. Jesus died to overcome poverty. And poverty is not simply, I know people hear that. Poverty is not simply the absence of finances. That's how most people define poverty. But there's a lot of people with money that are impoverished in their spirit, their knowledge, their love, um, just, the, just the things that God has delivered to us through the Son of Jesus. So poverty, when I say poverty, poverty is a spirit. God will not enable you in the things Jesus died to overcome. Now man will. Man will enable you. Just like, remember, we said that, that this man, he was lame from his mother's womb. He had enablers who were bringing him to the, to the gate every day so he could lie in the dirt um, on his mat and beg from the people going into the temple. So he had enablers. Man will enable you. Man will enable you in those things. Why? Because there are people who get power from your weakness. There are people who get power from your weaknesses. There are people who get power from those things that cripple you. There's entire systems that are set up in this world because it is a fallen world. The world has not been redeemed. The individual can be redeemed from the power of sin. The world's not been redeemed. So the world itself has systems that are set up, that are designed to enable people in their weaknesses. Why? Because those systems and the people in them then get power to rule over people. Oh, there's, some, there's so much deepness in that. that we, there's so much depth in that that we could go to. We're, we're not going to. Uh, but but we could just think and just meditate on that for a little bit. There are people who who have are in systems and they are designed to enable people in their weaknesses because then you depend upon um, those man-made systems and that's where I said at the beginning or at the end of last week that God's plan for you is not to waste away begging and pleading for humanity to have mercy on you. Now. What will God do? He will not enable you, but through his power, through his power, he will make you able to receive, enjoy, and share every promise that he ever made to you. Through his power, he will make you able. Through his power, he will make you able to receive, enjoy, and share every promise he ever made. All right? He, through his power, will make you able. You say, well, I'm disabled. <laughs> well, okay. Dis, meaning distance from able. You're just away. From, something has crippled you and has put you in a position to where you can't get to able. Jesus can get you to able. Amen? Jesus can get you to able. Well, I don't know if I believe that. I, you know, I get. I... <laughs> Disability is not always physical. But if there is a distance between you and Abel, get Christ to get rid of the distance. Amen? He'll do it. Because everything that has a name bows, has to bow, is under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now look what happened to this man that was carried there every day by his enablers. Now, this, this, now listen to me close on this one. A temple full of religion walked past this man every day 
and he was no better. Remember, Peter and John in unity, saved by Christ, baptized in the Holy Spirit, they're going to the temple. But prior to Jesus and prior to the day of Pentecost, this temple, this man had been carried there daily. We don't know how long, but we know he's about 40 years old, but he'd been carried there daily. And a temple full of religion had walked past him every day and he was no better. Church, that's religion. People going into the church, worshiping, throwing up their hands, doing all, whatever it is that they do inside, but not receiving the power of Jesus Christ to help the disabled, to help the lame man overcome that is which keeping him from enjoying, from living the promises that Jesus died for and on the ninth hour, the darkness. Three o'clock in the afternoon, the darkness in this man's life left. The weakness in his ankles left. <laughs> Praise God. you see that? Do you see that? Every day, a temple full of religion walked past this man, and he was no better. But two hearts full of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit led him to freedom and liberty. All he had to do was give what he had, and all he had was his attention. He gave his attention to two men who had been with Jesus, two men who were doing what Jesus told them to do, and he gave his attention to two men, and his life changed forever. Amen. Praise God. Gold and silver could not purchase his freedom or his healing. For man cannot buy what Jesus has already paid for. <laughs> Praise God. I love it when God drops into me just simple little things. Gold and silver. That's why, that's why Peter told him, said, gold and silver we don't have. We don't have any gold and silver, but what we have, we're going to give it to you. Why? Because John and Peter knew that what he needed couldn't be bought by the unrighteous mammon. There are some things that people need in their life that only the believer has to give them. Gold and silver could not purchase this man's healing, for man cannot buy what Jesus has already paid for. Oh, praise God. Write that down. Man cannot buy what Jesus has already paid for. I'm here today telling you. I, I know we've we've been we've been at home, and, and, and a lot of people say, "Oh, we're stuck at home." Now we've been at home. Praise God, praise God. There's some people need to be home. There's some people needed to be home. Why? Because there's some people needed to be home. But I'm telling you this day, I, I'm 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 t believer, believer in Christ Jesus. There are people. There are people like this man, lame from his mother's womb, that are looking for answers. Don't just go to the church and walk by. That's religion. Get in your Bible. Study and ask what God would have you to do. Study and ask what God would have you to do. I pray that the anointing of God will come on you so strong and that God will lead you to places where... I, I said... In, in the message I did about fear, I said, do not be afraid to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to get things that people need it to them. Do not be afraid because when you say, well, I, I, if I give to them, I won't have enough. That's fear. If God tells you to do it, if Jesus tells you to do it through the power of the Holy Spirit, if he tells you to do it and you get that unction to do it, do it, do it. And you're going to see miracles like this begin to take place. Believer, come home. Sinner, sinner, come home. Come home. The world's not your home. You're just passing through here. The world's not your home. Come home to Jesus. Fearful, people who are fearful, live in dread and torment, come home. Come home to faith. Angry, angry people. World's full of angry people. Sit and watch news and, and just angry. Sit and watch the news and see people fight. That's a disunity. That's disunity. That is disunity. Angry people, come home. Come home. Prideful. Those of you, it's, it really is the spirit of pride. 
mask itself in a lot of ignorance. You think you just don't need Jesus. You think you just don't need Jesus. There, that, that right there is what's got you paralyzed. See, you, you don't have a physical problem. You have a spiritual problem. And that spiritual problem has you paralyzed. And no matter how hard you try to whatever spirituality that you're in, if it's not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you are paralyzed, you are lame, and you can, but you can, you can get up and walk. All you've got to do is get up and leave that enabling system and get over with Christ. The battered, the bruised, and abused. The battered, the bruised, and abused. Come home. Come home. You're welcome. We're not looking for perfect people. We're looking for people, imperfect people, that want to worship and praise and shout to the glory of the perfect one. Amen? Leave your enablers behind. God has a celebration for us. God has a celebration for us when we leave our enablers behind. Religion, sin, pride, rebellion will not lift you up. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will not hold you back. Let's look at Acts 4.29. Because what happened? So this, this man, he's now, got his, he's now got his running shoes. He's now going into the church. He's now praising God. And there's some religious bunch in there that sees it. And what happens? Let's look at Acts 4.29. Acts 4.29. Praise God. Now you know when, when you leave those enablers, they may resist you. Now they may just go on and they may just go on and try to fight somebody else, but they will they will resist you. Acts 4.29. Now, Lord, this, this is Peter and John in the church praying. Now, Lord, look on their threats. This was the church people threatening people who had just prayed with this man and seen him. And now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. It takes boldness to speak this kind of word into the religious bunch. Amen? They'll call you all kinds of stuff. But let me tell you, if you can get beyond the criticism, if you can outlast the criticism, if you just stick with it, amen, by stretching out your hand to heal. Amen. Look what they said. That they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. This stuff gets done through the name of the holy servant, Jesus Christ. You be holy. You are holy if you're born again. Be his servant. Do what Jesus asked us to do, what he commanded us to do, and you're going to see some of these things begin to happen around you. God bless you. We love you. Get in touch with us. www.wncfreedomcenter.org God bless you. And until next time, may the Lord keep you in perfect peace and comfort. Amen. 